I'm always really happy to get your questions via social media and help you understand a little bit more about what I do. Uh, so we've collated uh, the last month's questions and uh, hopefully some of the mysteries will be unravelled. Question from an 18 year old who wants to know the best path towards joining the Amoka class. So I came in through uh, the route of mini transat sailing um, and I think the mini class is an amazing route into solo sailing because it's a great community, there are lots of different boats available, um, so it's a great place to start no matter what your budget. Um, and I would say try and get involved in any sort of short-handed or solo sailing in the UK, there's plenty of double-handed racing around. Um, but don't wait for it to be perfect, just find an opportunity and, and start going. What is the black band that you wear on your upper arm? Uh, so most of the time I'm wearing my autopilot remote control and wherever I am on the boat, it's important that I am able to still steer the boat, particularly when I'm on the foredeck handling sails. So I wear my autopilot on an elastic band on my left arm so that I can just reach over with my right arm and steer the boat. Was the last Atlantic crossing more uncomfortable than the big waves in the Roaring Forties? Um, I think every Atlantic crossing I've done has brought different challenges. Um, certainly a week of upwind going through fronts is not something that I enjoy and upwind sailing is more uncomfortable. But I don't think any situation is kind of more than another. They're just different, challenging in different ways. Uh, are you happy? Thank you for asking. <laughs> I am happy. Who wouldn't be happy? <laughs> um, how do you cope with sleep deprivation? Uh, I've trained myself to deal with sleep deprivation and the more I compete, the more I sail in this boat, the more used to it I am. Um, it took me a few months to get into it, but actually I just have to be really self-aware and kind of constantly assess, self-assess whether I need sleep and also taking small amounts of sleep does genuinely revive me when I'm on the water. Um, so I guess it's just through kind of repeating the exercise many times and experience. What are you doing for Christmas this year? Um, so last year I um, went to the Canaries uh, at the end of the year to kind of just do a bit of rest and recovery but also work on my fitness. And I found that that really helped me. So I'm going to go again this year and I'll be there for Christmas. And it kind of starts the, the mark of, of uh, a few weeks where I'll really be investing in myself, making sure that I'm well rested, but also building a really good platform of fitness to work on for the rest of the year. What is the toughest part of solo sailing? Um, solo sailing is tough. All of it's tough. And that's why I love it. I think it challenges me in every area. Um, it challenges me mentally, emotionally, practically, physically, um, and it's relentless and over and over again. But in those challenges, you also find the opportunity to improve and, and to step up and, and to be capable as a human being. And, and that's why I love it. <laughs> Who's your favorite member of the team? <laughs> Uh, whichever one of them sent this question in. <laughs> How do you cope with the mental part such a long time? Um, I really enjoy what I do. Uh, and I think the way that I deal with the difficult times and the way that I deal with the length of things is that I make sure the moments that are really special, the moments when I'm sailing by moonlight, the moments when I'm escorted by dolphins, the moment when the boat is absolutely flying and I'm on the edge I drink those moments in I, I fill up from those moments and they take me through the hard bits um, are you looking to modify the bow to be more of a scow bow um, so we are doing a bow modification to go with the 
big foils. Um, it's not going to be like a scourbow. So for those that don't know what a scourbow is, a scourbow is this big, full, round bow. So you're used to seeing pointy bows in traditional boats, but a scourbow has a huge amount of volume in it. Um, but that's not the modification we're making. We're making uh, a modification which is going to slightly change the volume of the bow, but it's mostly changing the shape of the bow. And the idea is that the boat will be more able to ride over the waves than digging into them. Um, at what point in the Vendée Globe did you want to give up and how did you overcome that? Um, I never wanted to give up the Vendée Globe. Um, the, the only time really that I felt I wasn't sure that I would be able to finish was when I became very physically unwell. Um, I, I was very unwell for, for maybe four weeks in, in the final return leg up the Atlantic and, and on one day I didn't seem to be getting any better and I didn't feel like I could get physically better and, and that was a day when I questioned whether I would be able to finish the race but I never wanted to stop and that was just one day and I got through it by listening to the advice from my medic who assured me that it would get better and then just kind of reassuring myself hour by hour that all I had to do was endure the hard bit and it would get better. What do you think of the application of renewable energy tech in offshore sailing? Um, I think, so, not necessarily renewable energy, but I definitely think that um, the use of kind of alternative energy sources in offshore sailing is um, something normal for us actually, and it's something we do a lot. So I create power on the boat using hydro generators. Um, so they're internal to the boat. I put a scoop down and then water fires into the boat through effectively what's like a turbine and that generates power the faster i'm going the more power i generate um, during our refit we're going to put solar panels on the boat um, and all of those things are incredibly well adapted to the environment that we sail in and i think it's really great to be able to test those resources and use them in really challenging ways and hopefully it may help the development in a more kind of commercial arena do you speak to anyone not there when feeling alone? Um, I think this question means, do I have kind of conversations with absent friends? Um, no, I don't actually, because I don't feel lonely when I'm sailing. I'm exactly where I want to be. I'm completely absorbed in a sport that I love. I'm dedicated and focused on getting the most out of my boat, but also, you know, I am very, very lucky in the fact that I have wonderful, secure relationships with family and friends at home, and I know that they're there for me if I need them. Um, so I don't really get lonely, but I do have the ability to contact the shore via satellite phone systems if I wanted to. Um, equipment to cut off the mast. So yes, we do have to carry uh, suitable tools to, um, to get rid of the mast and rigging should it fall down. And the reason for that is that if the mast fell down and I was in a big violent sea, it's quite possible that the bits that were floating around the boat could actually puncture a hole in the boat and damage the boat. So I have to be able to cut it free and then get it back on board. And so for that, I just carry um, a hacksaw with spare blades, but I also have a, um, an angle grinder, a battery powered angle grinder with a charger loaded already with a cutting disc. Um, and spare battery on board and that's all ready to go and I could cut through the carbon rigging in seconds with that. Do you have pumps to get rid of water in the boat? What kind? Uh, so currently I have two bilge pumps. Um, so I have a, a normal centrifugal bilge pump um, which is kind of my everyday one and then I have a, a bigger emergency one which is higher volume um, and I would get that out if, if I had a, a breach in one of the compartments or something like that. 
Um, during the refit, we're actually going to upgrade my normal bilge pump to be higher volume. And that's not only going to manage getting unwanted water out of the boat, but we'll probably start to use that as well with filling ballast tanks in the future. How do you stand the noise on the boat? Uh, the boat can be very noisy and sometimes I don't realise how noisy it is until I have other people sailing on the boat with me and and I have naturally a quite quiet voice and um, a lot of the time when you know the boat's really going for it people can't hear me talking at normal level um, because the boat's so noisy. I think I have adapted to it I'm used to the noise and in a way the noise is kind of my friend because it's often a noise that will alert you to a problem um, rather than seeing anything Uh, but having said that I am starting to wear noise cancelling headphones a little bit more um, just because it just gives you a little bit of respite from the noise occasionally Uh, How many kilos did you lose on the trip? Um, So actually I weighed myself this morning uh, and I lost four and a half kilos in the last six weeks of sailing, Um, which actually isn't too bad, I think. That's that's not too bad. Uh, Favourite music to sail to? I, I love sailing to music and there's so much that I listen to and actually it's a way that I kind of keep the people I care about in my mind as well because my friends and family make me playlists when I go away but still top tracks to listen to while I'm sailing uh, anything by Aretha Franklin um, and also Daft Punk uh, what made you want to get into sailing I think I discovered that I loved sailing when I was a teenager because it gave me a freedom and a responsibility that the world wasn't ready to grant me. Um, you know, on the water, you can be completely in control of so many aspects of your life. You know, you're driving the boat, you're navigating, you're making decisions about risk, but also there's an incredible freedom with traveling. You know, you can access so much of the world by boat. And I think I love the endless opportunities and the sense of freedom that sailing brings. Um, what does your winter look like? Um, the winter, um, so the boat's going into a massive refit over the winter. Uh, it's going to go into the shed um, in January. So this week or next week, we're going to lift it out here in Gosport. The mast's coming out, the keel's coming off. And then in January, we're transferring it to Carrington's in Hyde, where it goes into the big refit. And we're changing our small foils for double size foils. Um, and that's probably going to be four months of work from January. Um, so during those four months, um, I will be land based. Uh, I'm going to try and um, get as much kind of physical training in and activity during that time. Um, so I will be. Um, trying to get back into running focusing on my weight training but also I'll be working kind of on the business side of things we still looking to recruit sponsors for the next couple of years Um, and one of my major focuses is going to be talking to companies that would be interested in partnering us in the future thanks very much for your questions Uh, always feel like you can ask questions uh, and always tell us you know if you want to see more of one thing or more of another Thanks for being part of the journey. Uh, Next year's going to be incredible. Uh, We look forward to sharing it with you then.